I want to kind of talk about uh, BPI. So this is part of my, my research for my PhD. It, again, is to go through all of, as well as not all of, but a really good representative sample of DMC notice is sent by companies through um, the Lumen database. So kind of interesting, and this is one thing I'm noticing about some of the larger companies like BPI and ARIA, is that you end up with um, so much empty that it's a little odd to kind of wonder why they even sent it. And then you kind of get a few things here and there. You know, there's 184 URLs in here, but so much of this is empty that it's kind of like, why, why, why bother? Why did you do this as this many claims? It almost looks like their boilerplate um, was going weird as they kind of went through this. And then so you end up with all this empty claim that no one's going to work on, right? This is just going to get dumped by the machine, by the computerized algorithm, and no one's even going to notice or worry about it in terms of how they take a look at it. And you kind of see this with companies like RIA and BPI and Breen in terms of how they're sending through all these copyright claims. And I don't think this is like a database error. I don't think I'm dropping data as I go through here. But there are too many of these that are good, solid DMCA notices, and then there's some that are like this, where you kind of wonder what the story is, where they're going, um, how well their automation on their side, the BPIs and the RIAs and the brains and the MPAAs, was actually functioning or not functioning as they kind of went through this. You know, so it's kind of the process you're paying for this, right? So it's kind of a waste of money to have so much of this um, not even working. And then, you know, again, this is from 2014. So a lot of these URLs are dead now. There's, there's these sites no longer exist and, and that's okay too. So they're no longer on the internet. I have the feeling that as I get closer to 2017, I'm hopefully going to find some of these torrent sites and sharing sites actually still in existence and still working as the way they go in terms of it. But again, you end up with these hundreds of claims and so few of them are actually viable in terms of how they go. And that's the part I think that's really the weird part about this. I don't know if this is just they're trying to assert a copyright or they're trying to do something else along the way. But again, you run into this whole process and then you're kind of like going, hmm, what's the, what's the backdrop on this? What was going on with their computer systems as you kind of go through this and you just see basically uh, a junky claim that is really kind of sketchy along the way um, and then you kind of have to wonder. And the one thing I've noticed too, and this is really common among NPA, BPI, and RIA, is that they're cycling through this. It's like they cycle through their entire catalog and then as they cycle through their catalog, um, they just go out and they run a scan on a certain thing and they're looking for specific stuff. But then when they get going on this, they don't really notice that, you know, there's a ton of things in there. So I don't think their screen scrapers are working so good in Google. I think their automation has, it needs some work. I think they need a better programmer um, in terms of how they do this, you know, in terms of validating that the URLs actually work, going back and pinging them through, making sure that the file's actually there, um, making sure that it actually shows up in a search for those, because there's plenty of uh, search engines for all these networks. That's not a problem. Um, Jimmy Buffett, man, I don't, he shows up everywhere. Um, Jimmy Buffett's sort of like my uh, anchor for a lot of stuff that's going on with BPI right now. Because every time they do something, there's something about Jimmy Buffett in there, and I find that also kind of interesting as well. So again, worth sharing that you end up with these really odd, long claim, long forms kinds of things, but so much of it is empty, and this is not an unusual thing. This is something that uh, from going from 2009 to 2014, and I'm up to five years of this now, um, this is a common thing. This is not uncommon. This is a thing that BPI and RIA and MPAA and AvioLock and others do. So it's probably a good thing that's automated because I think that another person would be sitting on the end of the receiving cycle on this one and like, like scratching their head and like, why did you even send this to me? So again, kind of that interesting part, and this is not the uncommon portion of this, that we end up with so many of these records so empty with just nothing in there, um, unspecified, no description, no URLs, nothing alleged, and I'm not too sure why they bothered even kind of trying to send some of this stuff. And it's like, clean it up, right? You don't have to have this much stuff. You're sending basically an empty form, and when you're sending an empty form with a thousand honking claims on it, or 500 claims, and they're mostly empty, you know, you kind of just want to sit back and go, hmm, scratch your head a little bit and kind of go through. 
um, the whole process on this whole thing in terms of trying to see where they go and what they're trying to accomplish by using the DMCA. And I think this really kind of gives that whole idea of paying lip service to the DMCA. I think they're kind of going through the motions to assert and attest to their copyright, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're following the forms fully, right? They're not, they're missing bits and pieces. They're not doing things um, exactly perfectly to be compliant with the law. I think what they're doing is they're saying, hey, look, we found this thing. We're just going to go through and we're going to do it. And then from there, um, go back and then pursue other options, whether that's a claim, whether that's a court case, whether that's something else along the way. So I think this is just kind of that, that opening wedge into the whole process. I don't think that the way they're doing it is going to actually take it down from a particular site. And again, because the Lumen database is Google centric, I'm only seeing a very small portion of the picture. Um, but I think this opens the door to then going through and doing other things with the, with the sites or the companies or the people that they find involved in, in, in copyright infringement.